so far in unit 6 we have covered topics like global warming ozone layer depletion and acid rain today we are going to begin with a new topic which is environmental laws so the laws in india related to environment are first is the environment protection act 1986 air prevention and control of pollution act 1981 water prevention and control of pollution act 1974 wildlife protection act 1972 and forest act 1980 so these five environmental laws which are there in india we are going to look at each of these so let us first begin with environment protection act 1986 environment protection act is an umbrella legislation okay umbrella legislation means that it covers many aspects of environment okay and it was enacted by the indian parliament in the year 1986 for regulation of the environment now this act was passed under article 253 of indian constitution now what is this article 253 under article 253 the union government or the central government can enact laws to give effect to international agreements signed by the countries signed by the country that now here which international agreement was signed by india it was declaration on human environment okay this declaration was made at united nations conference on human environment at stockholm in the year 1972 now in this conference the declaration was signed by about 114 countries declaration on human environment contained 26 principles and the environmental issues different environmental issues such as pollution okay then industrialization and its effect on environment then population growth and its effect on environment all these environmental issues also the global warming then the ozone layer depletion all of these environmental issues they were placed at the forefront so different countries all over the world uh, they came together and uh, there was a sort of dialogue between them uh, between the industrialized country or the developed countries and the developing countries that how economic growth and well-being of people around the world can be accomplished by discussing or by abatement or reduce reducing different environmental problems such as pollution okay because in the last century due to we have seen that industrial revolution and the development that occurred in the 19th and the 20th century first half of the 20th century was largely responsible for the emissions different kinds of emissions so this conference was a landmark conference in terms of environment okay with respect to the environment and this conference further um, resulted in creation of united nations environment program you all must be aware of this okay so the 
UN Conference on Human Environment at Stockholm in 1972 was responsible for placing the environmental issue at the forefront, forefront and then subsequently in the year 1986 Indian Parliament enacted the Environment Protection Act under Article 253. to give effect to this international agreement which is declaration on human environment okay declaration on human environment is an international agreement signed by about 114 countries and at that time in 1972 and around 26 principles are there in this declaration okay now the in indian environment protection act 1986 it contains 26 sections okay and four chapters so there are 26 sections in this act and four chapters now let us look at after this conference that is in 1972 Indian Parliament inserted two articles, okay, Article forty-eight A and Article fifty-one A in the year nineteen seventy-six. What is this Article forty-eight A? And this Article forty-eight A states that the state should shall endeavour to protect and improve the environment, to safeguard forest and wildlife of the country. So that means it is the responsibility of the state. to protect and improve the environment okay to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country okay so it places the responsibility or on the state okay then article 51a it states that it shall be the duty of every citizen of india to protect and improve natural environment so article 51a is a duty okay of whom of every citizen of india to protect and improve the natural environment so these are the two articles in the constitution of india regarding the environment and subsequently uh, all these laws they subsequently insertion of these articles and enactment in between the various other laws were also enacted we'll look at it further so subsequently the department of environment was established in the year 1980 now what is environment protection act okay this act is established with the objective of protection and improvement of the environment so that means one has to protect the different aspects of the environment that is the natural resources such as air water soil okay and also to take steps to improve the environment why there was a need felt to improve the environment because there was a large scale pollution from all the sources okay particularly the factories the industries they were causing pollution and then there was increase in the concentration of greenhouse gases was only a depletion acid rain all of these uh, phenomena they were coming forward so to take to take all the steps for the improvement of the environment now central government okay under this act central government is authorized to protect and improve the environmental quality control and reduce pollution prohibit or restrict setting or operation of an industrial facility okay so the central government is given the responsibility in this respect now if it finds that a particular industry is causing pollution or releasing the toxic materials which are harmful to the health of um, the people as well okay people are also included in the environment so if it is harmful to the plants animals and also the people of this country then they it will 
prohibit or restrict the operation or setting of that industrial facility okay so it also can establish authorities okay and central government can establish authorities to prevent environmental pollution in all its forms okay so therefore uh, under there are boards established under this act central uh, pollution control board and state pollution control board so these boards are established to prevent the environmental pollution in all its forms so the central government can establish authorities as well so as to prevent the environmental pollution now let us look at the objectives of environmental environment protection act the objectives are that to implement the decisions taken for environment safety and protection at the united nations stockholm conference on human environment okay this is the first objective that whatever decisions were taken with respect to environment safety and protection at the stockholm conference in the year 1972 so all those decisions will be implemented through environment protection act second to provide a comprehensive legislation for environment protection in the beginning only i told you that environment protection act is an umbrella legislation that means it covers wide aspects of the environment okay so it is a indeed comprehensive legislation for environment protection in india then to establish the so it is a comprehensive legislation for environment protection in india then to establish new authorities for the same okay so it can establish new bodies uh, which can uh, carry out different works with respect to this act okay so the authorities will also be established then to provide for stringent punishment to those damaging the environment okay so stringent punishment means there are penalties Okay, strict penalties for those who damage the environment, and to encourage sustainable development. Now, what was sustainable development? We have discussed this previously. That the resources today have to be used in a manner that they will find utility to the future generation also. Okay, it should not be like today we are using the resources and depleting them completely. so that they are not available for the future use this is not sustainable development sustainable development is the one in which the resources today are utilized in a manner that they will be also available for the future generations okay now let us look at the composition of this act so there are total four chapters and 26 sections So chapter one consists of preliminary information, preliminary information, or the basic information such as title and definitions. Okay. So section two of this chapter, that is chapter one, defines various terminologies such as environment, environment pollutant, hazardous substance, etc. So all those terminologies with respect to the environment are defined in section two of chapter one. Okay, so chapter one consists of preliminary information such as titles and definitions. Which kind? Which definitions? Definition of environment, um, environment pollutant, hazardous substances, etc. Okay, all that is defined in the chapter one. Chapter two describes general powers of the um, central government. okay so some of these powers that are given to the central government are that to plan and execute nationwide programs okay so central government should not restrict itself to any particular state or any particular region the central government carries out plans and executes it plans and executes nationwide programs that means all over the country which programs programs for 
spreading education about the any um, environmental issue then programs for reducing the pollution okay if training is required they also impart um, the training so all of these are um, these powers have been given to the central government okay and then to lay down quality standards quality standards um, in the sense what should be the see air water and food these are the basic needs of every human being so if uh, we have to breathe in air what quality of air should be present in the environment that means it will define different pollutants concentrations of different pollutants that is accepted in the environment so you might have heard that um, there are air pollution particularly in the national capital is a serious issue and also other parts of the country also the highly polluted cities but those which are densely populated uh, are majorly responsible or facing this air pollution problem why because the concentration of various pollutants like sulfur dioxide nitrogen oxides then carbon dioxide carbon monoxide particulate matter is way higher when we compare it to the other cities okay or in the rural area also so what kind of quality should be there in the air then food okay in terms of soil pollution uh, if you are nowadays a uh, lot of pesticides are used and excess amount of fertilizers are added to the soil so what is the effect of those pesticide and what is the effect of those uh, fertilizers excess use of fertilizers on the soil what should be the appropriate amount that should be used in order to maintain the quality of the soil so that standard is uh, defined then water water quality water is at most important for human beings okay so if there are industries in the vicinity of a water source so what should be the emission emissions uh, before when they are they should never be released in the water body if they are not treated well okay so for that the treatment sewage treatment plants or the industrial effluent treatment plants are set up so so the effluents industrial effluents are treated first and then they are, they are they are the water is let out in the uh, nearby source also the sewage treatment plants are there in, in the vicinity of the uh, water source to treat the waste first and clean water should should be allowed to enter the river so all of the, uh, these standards that is quality standards are laid down by the central government so this power is given to the central government then operation of certain industries yes certain industries that means those which cause pollution okay high levels of emissions are given out from these industries we have seen yesterday only when we were talking about acid rain we discussed that the cement manufacturing industry then the chemical production industry the various pharmaceutical uh, industries all of these these are responsible for high um, levels of uh, sulfur and nitrogen emissions so they should first treat the uh, these gases so we saw that there was a technique called as flue gas desulfurization so all of these advanced technologies can be installed and then the pollution can be controlled so all of this power that is operation of certain industries lays down with the central government to establish and recognize environmental laboratories and institutes now we will always support research in the field of environment because there is there is a need for the, uh, the research today and for that we need environmental laboratories and institutes which will carry out um, systematic research of 
various environmental problems in our country by considering the past data and the present data. So all of these powers, they have been given to the central government. Okay. Then chapter 3 gives central government the power to take actions. That means the law is not restricted just to description of the powers. Okay. And what are the, is not restricted to the functions that the central government should carry out. But it also empowers the central government to take actions. That means if there is violation of any of the uh, objective or the principle set by this act, then there are penalties for that central government can take effective actions. So, what kind of actions that we will see further as and when the topic comes. Okay. So, chapter 4 allows government to appoint officers to achieve the objectives of the act. Yes, for the act to function or the laws to come into So, for the law, laws made under this act, okay, to function properly, there have to be the officers. There has to be officers to implement this act properly. So, the government will appoint officers to achieve the objectives of the act. What are the other features of this act that includes issues that central government can issue directions to any person, officer, authority to close, prohibit or regulate any industry, operation or process or to stop or regulate the supply of electricity, water or any other service. See what happens if any industry, operation or process. Uh, it is found to cause or harm environment. Then central government what it can do? It can issue directions to that person that you first stop emitting the, uh, the pollutant or any process that is harming the environment. If the person does not listen uh, also it can close that industry okay, or prohibit the industry or regulate any operation or process. It can also stop the supply of electricity, water or any other service to such industry or any to such operating units. Okay. Then it lay down the rules regulating the environmental pollution. Environmental pollution is a bigger concern today particularly of the air and water pollution. So, the rules for regulating different forms of environmental pollution are laid down by this act. Then to enter and inspect a place, central government authorizes certain persons or let us say the officers, they can inspect any uh, equipment in, a, in an industrial facility. They can inspect any record of that industrial facility, register then register uh, also it can conduct a search in that building or wherever the offense was committed so the power to enter and inspect the place is also given in the act then handling of hazardous substances previously we have seen that chapter 1 of this act defines various substances so, hazardous substances are also included. The rules for handling of hazardous substances are also included in this. Okay, now having understood the different aspect of this act, let us look at the penalties okay, or the punishment. So, the section 15 of the act prescribes penalty for general offences. So, for general offences, the penalty is imprisonment for a term of 5 years or a fine 
up to 1 lakh or both okay so if the person fails to comply with this penalty or or he continues with the offense then he has to pay additional rupees 5000 per day okay and if this failure or, or contra contravention extends beyond one year from the date of conviction then what will happen the impri imprisonment or can extend up to seven years okay then section 16 of the act describes that the offenses committed by companies and 17 by various government departments so there are penalties for various offenses under this act okay so let us now look at the let us now revise what we have discussed about the environment protection act so we in the beginning we have seen that environment protection act was enacted by the indian parliament in the year 1986 under article 253 so this article 253 states that the union government can enact laws so as to pursue any international agreement this international agreement was declaration on human environment which was made at stockholm in the year 1972 okay and in the year 1976 indian parliament inserted two articles that is article 48a and 51a so article 48a states that it shall the state shall make provisions to protect and improve the environment and safeguard forest and wildlife of the country and article 51 a states that it is the duty of every citizen to protect and improve the natural environment so these two articles were inserted in the year 1976 and subsequently a department of environment was established in the year 1980 regarding environment protection act we have seen that it is an umbrella legislation a umbrella legislation means it is a holistic act contains wide range of um, deals with wide range of environment issues okay so the objective of this act or this act was established with the objective of protection and improvement of environment here the central government is authorized to protect and improve environmental quality control and reduce the pollution prohibit or restrict setting or operation of industrial facility so the responsibility of protecting and improving the environmental quality controlling and reducing the pollution restricting the operation of industrial facility is vested with the uh, central government okay under this act the central government can establish authority for preventing the environmental pollution in all its forms then what were the objectives that first of all to implement decisions for environment safety and protection at un stockholm conference then to provide a comprehensive legislation or holistic legislation for environment protection to establish new authorities for the same Okay, and to provide stringent punishment or strict punishment to those who damage the environment to encourage sustainable development these are some of the objectives then we have looked at the composition of uh, environment protection land that it comprises of four chapters and 26 sections chapter one contains preliminary information such as title definitions such as what is uh, environment then environment polluted hazardous substance all these definitions are included in chapter one chapter two describes the general powers of the government central government okay so these powers are to plan and execute nationwide programs 
के विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू एनवायरमेंट टू ले डाउन द क्वालिटी स्टैंडर्ड्स फॉर एयर वाटर क्वालिटी स्टैंडर्ड्स दैन सर्टन एनवायरमेंटल पोल्यूटेंट्स ऑल्सो प्रोसीजर्स एंड डिफरेंट सेफ गार्ड्स टू प्रिवेंट एक्सीडेंट्स सो ऑल दिस इज डील बाय द चैप्टर टू थर्ड इज टू कोआर्डिनेट actions among the state governments officers and other authorities okay then operation of uh, certain industries particularly those causing uh, pollution or those emitting hazardous substances and to establish and recognize environmental laboratories and institutes for the same that is for research it helps to recognize the environmental laboratories and different types of institutes then chapter 3 gives central government the power to take actions so it that not only lists the different rules but it also gives powers so that not only gives lists the functions but also gives powers to the central government to take actions against those who are damaging the environment so the government can also appoint officers in order to achieve the objectives of the act and this part is dealt by dealt by the chapter 4 other features are that central government can issue directions regarding the operation of any industry it can also regulate the supply of any facility to this industry then to lay down rules regulating the environmental pollution okay to enter and inspect a place that it can inspect any equipment or it can conduct a search in a building where the offense was committed it can also inspect records registers and also it deals with the handling of hazardous substances then we have looked at the penalties that section 15 of the act prescribes penalties for general offences this penalty is for 5 years or a fine of 1 lakh rupees or both and this fine if the person the failure to failure or the contravention continues beyond the conviction then the additional fine may be laid that is 5000 rupees per day and again this continues for one year then imprisonment up to 7 years it also describes the offenses committed by the companies and the different government departments having understood the environment protection act let us look at the air prevention and control of pollution act 1981 air is one of the basic needs of human beings isn't it so if air is polluted the survival is doubtful right now we are facing this problem in densely populated cities and some of the highly polluted cities in the country when the air quality has deteriorated over the past 5 years so the again air prevention and control of pollution act 1981 so it was enacted in 1981 way before the enactment of environment protection act again this act was uh, enacted under the article 253 we have discussed this article that it empowers the central government no it empowers the indian parliament to enact laws in pursuance of international agreement okay so again with respect to the 1972 conference stockholm conference air prevention and control of pollution act was enacted what are the objectives of this act the objectives include prevention control and abatement of air pollution by established boards now what is the meaning of abatement abatement is to reduce or remove the air pollution 
by established boards there are central board and state boards pollution control boards established under this act so prevention control and reduction or removal of air pollution by established boards this is the objective of air act section 2a of this act defines air pollutant okay it defines air pollutant as any solid liquid or gaseous substance that may be harming or injuring to the environment humans other living creatures plants or even property so it gives definition of air pollutant also so in the illustration below you can see uh, primary pollutants and secondary pollutants what com comprises of uh, primary pollutant are all the gases sulfur dioxide nitrogen oxide carbon dioxide carbon monoxide okay suspended particles then secondary pollutants when these primary pollutants react in the atmosphere and they form secondary pollutants so this act defines what is the meaning of an air pollutant okay in the in the year 1987 an amendment was made to this act and the noise was also included in the list of substances that are deemed to be harmful to the environment so noise pollution is also dealt by air prevention and control of pollution act 1981 okay so remember that section 2b of this act defines air pollution so as the presence of any air pollutant in the atmosphere so how can we define air pollution it is the presence of any air pollutant in the atmosphere and section 2a has already defined what is an air pollutant okay then under this act two boards have been set up first is the central pollution control board and the second is the state pollution control board see the difference is that the powers of the central board will extend to entire india and the union territories as well okay but the powers of the state control board will ex they will be restricted to a particular state Okay, that means Maharashtra has its state control board. Karnataka will have its own state control board. So different states will have their pollution control boards. Okay, so uh, below is an illustration where you can see particulate matter. Here you can see that the PM two point five, that is the size of the particulate matter, is less than two point five micron meters. this is very very dangerous okay it can enter your body easily and cause a number of respiratory problems okay so pm 2.5 presence in the air is considered as harmful okay then let us look at the functions of central pollution control board it includes functions such as to make efforts for prevention abatement and control of air pollution what is the meaning of abatement we have discussed that to reduce or remove so prevention abatement and control of air pollution in the country and it advises the central government on this issue okay or on this matter now how to prevent or how to reduce and how to control air pollution so it advises the central government on this matter then to plan and implement a nationwide program for prevention control and abatement of air pollution okay it can plan and also implement a nationwide program for the uh, for the above purpose okay it will coordinate the activities of various states and will also resolve any disputes that arise between them okay sometimes um, the issue may be between two states regarding the air pollution just like the uh, stubble burning issue which is there in the uh, northern india okay so a number of states are involved in this causing the pollution which is found in delhi 
is a result of stubble burning in various adjacent uh, states. So, this is again where the central government comes into picture where it can coordinate the activities of the states and will resolve the disputes if any arise arising between them. It will also provide technical assistance to the boards okay, that there are various state boards under this act. So, technical assistance can be provided by the central government carry out investigations and research relating to air pollution. Also, it investigates different uh, uh, facilities, industrial facilities and carries out research related to that. To plan and implement training programs to the persons involved in those programs. Um, extremely important is to impart training regarding this uh, objectives of this act and that training can be given by the Central Pollution Control Board. It can also help to combat air pollution through a mass media program. Nowadays, uh, mass media is of utmost important if we have to spread any message. Okay, so, air pollution can be combated through various mass media programs. Then it shall collect, compile and publish statistical data relating to air pollution. Okay. So, statistical data relating to air pollution is very important to plan and implement future strategies. Okay. So, all that compile uh, compilation then publishing the statistical data and also to prepare manuals, codes and guides uh, regarding how to measure uh, uh, relating to the measures to combat air pollution is done by the central pollution control board. Also it lays down the standards for quality of air. Okay. So, can you see this air quality index chart? You might have uh, also seen this uh, index in various uh, areas in our city also where th this is displayed ok. So, index value 0 to 50 is considered as good, 51 to 100 is considered as moderate, 101 to 150 is unhealthy for sensitive group, 151 to 200 again unhealthy, then there is very unhealthy and hazardous. We also have uh, boards in various uh, areas in our um, city where you can uh, actually they also give concentration of various uh, pollutants present in the air. So, the common people can also come to know about it. Okay. Then the board shall also set up laboratory or multiple laboratories to enable the board to perform its functions effectively. Yes for research and for understanding any chemical that is harmful to the environment, board has to establish the laboratories. Now, let us look at the functions of state pollution control board. So, it has functions such as planning and implementation of programs for prevention, control and abatement of air pollution and advise the state government on such matters. So, again it is regarding the prevention, control and abatement of air pollution, but in the state, in a particular state okay. and also it will advise the state governments on such matters. Central Pollution Control Board was advising the central government, State Pollution Control Board will advise the state government. Then the second function is collection and dissemination of information. Regarding air pollution, organize training and mass awareness programs regarding air pollution, prevention and abatement. See collection and disseminate information that means it can collect samples from various uh, air polluting units. It can give information about various air pollutants. Okay, and it can also organize training of the people involved in this process and it all will also 
conduct mass awareness programs regarding the air pollution okay it also has powers to uh, inspect at reasonable times any control equipment then industrial plant or manufacturing process so if any industrial plant or manufacturing process is causing air pollution it can inspect it at reasonable times and also gives orders to the people in charge to further the pro- purposes of combating air pollution so it can give orders to either uh, reduce it can give orders to either restrict the operate operation of the industry so as to combat air pollution it ha- it can also inspect and assess the air quality as at designated air pollution control areas as it may think necessary so if it says that this area in a particular city or a state is highly polluting then it can inspect and assess the air quality standards in that area okay so these are the functions of the state pollution control boards state pollution control boards also lay down standards for the emission of air pollutants okay into the atmosphere from automobiles or industries or any other pollutant from the source okay now it will also advise the state government regarding the suitable uh, suitability of any location which is to be used for setting up any industry that means if any industry has to be set up in a particular place it will advise that whether this location is suitable for setting up that kind of industry okay so if an industry is causing air pollution then it might not suggest setting up of that industry in a particular location where there is human habitation so all of this is kept in mind so uh, to advise the state government in setting up of such kind of uh, industrial facilities so all of these advice is given by the state pollution control board also it can set up labs in the states to enable the state go- state board to perform its functions effectively okay so the below is an illustration of um, the air purifiers okay so these were called these are called as smog towers okay these are established in so it is an example of smog towers you can see this is this was established this was set up in new delhi okay to prevent or uh, the or to reduce to purify the air that is air pollutants okay so the air enters into the smog tower the purified air comes out okay so for air purification these smog towers are set up at various intervals okay now let us look at the penalties of air pollution prevention of pollution prevent control and prevention of air pollution act the penalties are that if any industry or a person managing an industry it is he is penalized if emissions produced are in excess of air quality standards that are laid down by the board also board can make applications to the court for restraining such persons those who cause air pollution then contravention of any provisions of the act or any order or direction issued under this act is punishable with imprisonment for a term of 3 months or fine up to 10000 rupees or both and if this contravention continues an additional fine of 5000 rupees per day then section 46 states that no civil court shall have jurisdiction in any matter which an appellate authority formed under this act is empowered by this act to decide nor should an injunction injunction be granted in respect of any action taken under the pursuance of the powers of this act that means it bars the it debars the civil courts okay civil courts will not have any uh, jurisdiction okay if any order is given by the concerned authority civil courts cannot interfere that is the meaning of this section 46 okay 
so that was all about the air prevention and control of pollution act so today we have discussed two acts first was environment protection act and the second is air prevention and control of pollution act 1981